look, maybe he shouldn't have said it, but US President Joe Biden went off script and let the truth slip yesterday when he called China's President Xi Jinping a dictator. He said the reason Xi Jinping got very upset when Biden got the Air Force to shoot down a Chinese spy balloon over the US was that Xi didn't know it was there. And Biden said, that's a great embarrassment for dictators when they didn't know what happened. Now, China's foreign ministry was furious. Now, sure, Biden may put his foot in it again, yet again, but we've got much bigger things actually to worry about than China's hurt feelings, because we told the truth. Yes, he is a dictator. Last night, a new book was launched here. The next major war, it's called, Can the US and its Allies Win Against China? And this book warns that war with China is a strong possibility over the next decade. Its author is Ross Babbage, who's a former head of strategic analysis in our Office of National Assessments, is now with the Washington-based Centre for Strategic and Budgetary Assessments. Ross Babbage, thanks for joining us. Why do you say in your book that war is a strong possibility in the next decade? Well, um, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, has um, promised his public on numerous occasions and continues to promise his public uh, that he is going to um, uh, incorporate Taiwan, democratic Taiwan, uh, into China as a province of China. Uh, the Taiwanese, of course, don't want anything to do with this. Um, and uh, on the other side of the Pacific, uh, we've had President Biden uh, say four times since his election uh, that if uh, China is attacked with military force, uh, the United States will commit uh, military forces also to the, de to the defence of Taiwan. So here we have the two sides uh, with diametrically opposed positions. And um, uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, China, it's maybe, and Xi Jinping probably feels as though he's running out of time, and that in order to incorporate Taiwan, he may have to move in the next few years he can't wait indefinitely because he has lots of other problems, including domestic problems that are probably going to get worse in the next few years as well. So that's why um, this is a very serious issue. We could we could face a major crisis quickly. Yeah, well, talk is one thing, of course, but you also write that uh, President Xi Jinping uh, seems to have been stepping up preparations for war over the past few months in particular again, and he seems to be preparing a war economy, making China more self-reliant ahead of any uh, conflict. Uh, what sort of signs are you looking at there? Well, I mean, a lot of the investment um, that's being done in new technologies uh, and in terms of um, uh, trading relationships too have been designed to insulate the, uh, China from international pressures and potential coercion and to make the Chinese economy much more dependent upon domestic consumption uh, rather than international factors, uh, both investment and, and, in fact, trade. And so what we have seen is China stepping away. Um, and, in fact, this has had a big impact on Chinese growth, economic growth. Chinese economic growth today is about only about a quarter of what it was in 2007. Um, and, uh, you know, the impact of this shift, this sort of non-market driver, which is designed to improve, as he, as Xi Jinping sees it, uh, the security of China, is probably costing them between 1% and 2% of GDP They're in growth. So it's a very expensive program, but they're doing a lot of things and spending a lot of time and resources on building up their security, obviously building up their military, and they're doing a whole raft of other things, which are not really economically rational. And of course, uh, you know, if there is a war in the region, uh, a lot of world trade will will stop or be severely curtailed. China then can keep going, but we've, we're so dependent on trade that, uh, well, it's going to be very, very difficult for us. Now, you say China knows a war will be brutal. It knows it will last a long time. But one of the things you, th you say that uh, President Xi is, is figuring is that Western societies are actually fractured. 
uh, they won't go the distance. They'll quarrel, people will quarrel amongst themselves. They'll lose interest, lose heart. Why would he think that about the West? And is he, in fact, right? Well, he looks at the United States. He looks at the level of polarisation and the extreme fact, you know, that really the extraordinary situation in the United States where you've got, um, you know, the Democrats and especially the left of the Democrats and then on the Republican side, um, really substantially different positions on all, so, all, all sorts of issues, including on international issues. Um, and he believes, that is, Xi Jinping believes, that if, China, if the United States is put in a situation of having to face a prolonged war, uh, a prolonged conflict with no end in sight and continuing to take casualties, that the United States uh, will see mass demonstrations in the streets uh, and a lot of further dissent on the already sort of fractured political situation there and that the United States will have to basically uh, come to the negotiating table on terms that should be pretty close to those that the Chinese leadership wants. So that's what he's counting on. And we believe the evidence for that is, is pretty uh, clear. We, we follow very closely what the leadership says every day and uh, the, in, the, the clear impression given and what they're actually saying, including on some of their internal debates, suggest that they believe that a bit like, if you like, the sort of situation that happened in the Vietnam War, that if the war went on long enough and if the United States and its allies were taking pain long enough in the end, uh, they, even though they may be winning um, some military victories, uh, they will be politically exhausted and they will choose to go away. And that is really the Chinese goal. And in fact, one of the members of his ruling Politburo has written a book about America in decline and decay. Uh, I don't know how true it is, yes. but that's what they believe. And that's the most important part about it, I guess. So what are we going to do about this, uh, Ross Babbage? Look, what we've got to do is um, uh, coordinate with our friends and, and neighbours and allies um, a raft of activities. It's not just a military issue here. Uh, we have to build resilience within our societies. We've got to provide greater protections uh, for against cyber attack, against coercive act activities against us, um, against uh, interference in our political affairs and so on, and in our media and especially on social media. Uh, the Chinese have big organisations doing this today and they've got about nearly a million people, actually, in four major organisations conducting these operations and planning further operations in crises of these types. Then we've got to actually um, improve our supply chains, the security of our supply chains, so that we uh, depend much more on, on reliable sources for everything that's essential for our operations. I'm not saying we shouldn't be training, uh, trading with China. Uh, what I am saying, though, is that we've got to be very careful how exposed we are in everything from pharmaceuticals to fuels uh, to uh, processed mineral products uh, right through to machinery and just about everything that's, that could be really important in a crisis. At the moment, uh, we have in this country, in Australia, um, we've cut our manufacturing sector dramatically and we really need to resuscitate that and we need to do it with, our, with the United States, obviously, as well and, and with our other partners and friends, including countries like Japan, Korea, many of our Southeast Asian friends, India and, of course, our European allies and friends as well. Uh, I agree. It's got to be a, a real, um, you know... Uh connection with other democracies uh, to try to uh, save ourselves. But unfortunately, I, I see too much hallelujah China's trading with us again that we seem to be uh, determined to make ourselves more dependent on China rather than less. And that's got to change. Ross Babbage, I urge people to read your book. Um, war may not break out, but I think the possibility, as you write, is so significant that we cannot uh, be anything but uh, hypervigilant about making sure that if it does happen... We're prepared. Thank you so much for your time.